David Sinclair is a genetic professor, uh, genetic scientist. He's at Harvard. He has a book called Lifespan. And he's arguing that um, aging is not inevitable. Aging is not inevitable. Forget that status quo. Aging is an option. There are uh, breakthroughs in antioxidants that are such that we should be able to live longer than we thought. We can uh, break the aging process. I had this talk about this author uh, with my brother-in-law on Christmas. Daniel is reading this book, uh, Lifespan, and he's excited. And I'm excited too because I want to live a long time. I can't die. I got too much stuff to figure out. I need to live to about 130. 130 would be just a great way to live uh, that long. I, I could just imagine myself bragging about how long I'm. Look at me, man. I'm amazing. I'm doing all the right stuff to live to 130. I'm uh, using the latest in antioxidant technology. I'm eating until I'm 80% full, as they say in Okinawa, Harahachi Bume. Uh, I'm taking cold showers to uh, resist aging and to increase my testosterone. I'm uh, eating well, exercising, taking cold showers, getting the correct uh, antioxidants. I'm doing uh, the, uh, the deep breathing bubble. Who is that guy? Win Hof. Win Hof. Um, I'm only 30 miles from a blue zone. Loma Linda is a blue zone, man, where people live to a 90 and 100. I'm doing everything just right. Uh, but if I live to 130, does that guarantee a high quality life? Does that, I mean, my concern is that by focusing on living to 130, I'm treating myself like a consumer appliance. Like, let me give you an example. If I buy a refrigerator and it lasts 30 years, and that, that's something that happens. I've talked to people, their refrigerators have lasted 30 years, their king size beds have lasted 20 years. If I get something like that, I get bragging rights. I get to say, look at me, man, I'm an amazing consumer. And my neighbor bought a refrigerator and she had to replace it after two years. I won, I'm number one. And I wonder if that mentality carries over in, into living to 130. What if uh, I live to 130 and I'm on my deathbed? Look at me, man, my amazing lifestyle. It, it let me live to 130. No one else lived that long. I'm number one. Yeah. And I'm thinking, that's, there's some, I'm missing something. If, if that's how I see my life, like a consumer appliance, Maybe I need to redirect my focus. Maybe I got it all wrong. Maybe, maybe treating myself like an appliance, the emphasis is on um, quantity when it should be on quality. So what's going to define a quality of life? Maybe my life needs to be built on a moral framework. And so let's look at my moral framework. How do I score? on the moral grade uh, scorecard. Mm, probably mediocre. I can be pretty lazy. I can be uh, pretty self-indulgent. I can be selfish. I, I think, you know, I'm decent enough, but I give myself a mediocre score. I try to stay, uh, uh, you know, current with the, uh, with the moral topics of the day. The other night I was watching a documentary on uh, hunger world hunger and I got bored frankly and I got hungry and I had to eat a peanut butter and honey sandwich you know I'm, I, I don't know how moral I am I'm watching a movie about hunger and I'm stuffing my face it's pathetic so I don't, I don't know how moral I am but I, I don't know all this focus on living to 130 maybe I'm missing the boat maybe I need to focus on morality how many types of uh, morality uh, options do we have I think there's three ways to be moral uh, one, we can be religious. We can say that we need to reconcile with our maker. We need to be the light of the world. Whenever I think of the religious framework, I think of a movie I saw when I was 16, gave me a chill, Superman. Christopher Reeves was Superman. I remember his father uh, was sending him to planet Earth. He says, come on, man, human race can be good, but you got to be the light of the world, man. You got to be the light. 
And that's the religious uh, moral framework. You have to go into this world to be the light of the world. I remember that gave me chills. It spoke to me. No, there's a second moral framework. Uh, secular humanists uh, such as Elizabeth Anderson and Martin Hogland, a professor uh, who wrote a book called This Life, they say forget about eternity. You need to focus on the here and now. You need to uh, focus on building a, um, you know, a, a liberal democracy. Uh, your morality has nothing to do with, with divinity or religion. Your morality is based on evolution, on social reciprocity. Uh, there's no, uh, in fact, if anything, religion leads to tribalism and prejudice. Give up religion, become a secular humanist. That's what the uh, secular humanists say. There's one other moral framework that's influenced me. I was 16 years old, and there's a famous song. Uh, it's still famous. It was, it was a big hit when I was 16. It was by Steely Dan, Deacon Blues. The narrator of Deacon Blues rejects all conventional morality. He, um, he drinks a lot of whiskey, he's a sensuous nihilist, he slithers through the urban streets, and he indulges in his hedonistic pleasure quests. And um, I don't, that, that song spoke to me. It was like, this world is so jacked up, it's such a freak show. I'm not even going to get involved and I'm just going to be my own man. I'm gonna, this brother's going to be free. He's going to be what he wants to be. And uh, so that's, that's, that's a moral framework based on rejecting conventional morality. You just become the sort of self-centered hedonist doing your own thing. So which moral framework am I as I try to live to 130? Can I be honest with you guys? I see bits and pieces of myself in all three and it ticks me off because I want a nice simple story about my life. I want a nice simple narrative all wrapped up in shiny uh, packaging with a nice beautiful bow on it because that's the way my life should be and it's not. It's messy and that's why I need to live to 130. I need more time to figure this out. So tell me what you think ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna go work out man and then I'm going to need some healthy antioxidants afterwards. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, I'm out.